Here I have a coin and I would like it to play an animation whenever I click on it. Here's how I do that. In Unity, when we click on my coin, we can see I have an animator on it. And on the animator, we can see that I have two animations on it, coin rotate and coin obtain. Now I'd like it to change between coin rotation and coin obtained only when triggered. So to do that, I'm gonna come into my parameters tab. And I'm gonna hit this little plus button and create a trigger parameter. I'm gonna call this coin collected. Now I'm gonna create a transition between coin rotation and coin obtained. And I'm gonna set all of its settings to zero and disable has exit time. And then I'm gonna come down to this little plus button and change it so that the transition only happens when the button is called. Awesome, so now just to test that all this is working, we hit play on Unity and I come back to my animator, we can see that when I hit the coin collected trigger, it changes the animation from coin rotation to coin obtained. So now that the animation is set up, it's time to make the logic for this coin. Coming back into the scene view, I'm gonna click on my prefab and I'm gonna go add component sphere collider. I'm gonna change the size of the sphere collider to be the size of the coin. And then I'm gonna select is triggered to equal true so that plays don't collide with the coin. Now that we have the collider, we need to add some logic to this object. So we're gonna go add component udon behavior. And now it's time to create the script that's gonna go inside this component. So I'm gonna to go to the project window. I'm gonna right click, go create VRChat udon udon graph program asset. And I'm just gonna call this coin logic. And then we're gonna come over and open up the udon graph. Now that we're in the Udon graph, we need to create some variables. So I'm going to come over to our variables tab here. I'm going to hit this little plus and I'm going to create an animator. I'm going to call this animator anim for short. And I'm going to hit this little drop down menu and make it public so that we're able to select it inside the inspector. We also want to come back up and create a string variable. And I'm going to call this trigger name. This one will also be a public variable. Now we want to come into the graph. We want to right click and go get node. The shortcut for this is spacebar. We then want to go animator set trigger. Now quickly, we come to the animator and we go to the parameters and we hit the little plus button, we'll see the four different types of parameters that you can make. These four different types can all be accessed via Udon. By going get node animator set integer or set float or set bool, we can get the three other types of variables. Also, if you want to do some math or other logic, you can do the get version of them, get int, get float, get bool, to get the current value set in the animator. However, as I'm only going to be using a trigger, I won't be using any of that today, but you would call it exactly the same. So on the set trigger node, we have two inputs. The first one is the animator that we're playing on. So I'm just going to grab our anim and I'm going to chuck that into the instance slot. And the second is the ID. Now I prefer to use the name of the parameter instead. So I'm going to hit this little int button and I'm going to hit string. And this will allow me to call it via name, which is what I prefer, especially when you're trying to reuse a script. Now we're just going to grab our public string and we're going to plug that into the string input. So now whenever this node is called, it will tell this animator to play the trigger that has this name. And so all that's left is to tell the script when to play this node. By creating a simple event interact node, we can plug that into the set trigger node so that whenever the object is clicked, it will play this node. Awesome. So now we come back into our scene. We want to click on our object and we want to chuck our udon behavior into the udon behavior component. We then want to grab our animator and we want to chuck that into the anim slot. And then we want to come into the animator itself and grab the parameters name and paste it into the trigger name. This is case sensitive. Then I'm just going to change the interact text to be pick up coin. And now it's time to test this. And now that we're in the world, if I come over to my coin, we can see that when I click it, it plays the animation. Awesome, but currently this only works locally. What if we wanted the animation to play for everyone? Well, if we're not concerned about latecomers, we can simply create a custom event. I'm gonna call my one play animation. And we can plug that into the set trigger node. Then from our event interact node, we can plug that into an Udon behavior send custom network event. Now I'm gonna make sure target is set to all. Then I'm gonna set its target event to the custom event that we just made. So when we click the button, it'll tell everyone to play this event and this event will tell everyone to play this node. Okay, okay, but what if we do care about latecomers? We certainly wouldn't want people to be picking up this coin that's already been picked up. Well, an easy way of doing this would be to create a synced variable that stores the value of whether or not the coin has been picked up or not. Now, if you've got lots of coins, this would not be the best way of doing this. Instead, what you'd want is you'd want the instance owner to be telling everyone, hey, look, the coin has been updated if it has been. But for the sake of simplicity of this tutorial, this is the way I'm gonna do it. So coming back to this, we're going to go to our variables tab. We're going to hit this little plus button and we're going to create a bool. I'm going to call this bool is picked up and then we're going to hit this little drop down menu and make it a public synced variable. Now I'm just going to grab this new bit of code and drag it up. And instead of the custom event setting this trigger, I'm instead going to grab a bool. I'm going to drag it while holding control to set its value. And I'm going to drag our custom event into this new set node. Now we need to say what value we want to change the bool to. So we're going to go bool construct bool. And we're going to make this equal true and then plug that into the value slot. Now what we want to do is we want to grab our is collected ball and we want to hold down alt to get an event that will be played whenever the ball changes. So now we want to grab the output of that event and plug that into our set trigger node. So whenever the ball changes, we want to trigger the new animation. Now, in order for this event to be called, we do need to make sure that we hit send change when we are setting the value. 
And while we're at it, we might as well come up to the Send Custom Network event and change its target to be the owner, as it's only the owner that's able to change the synced variable. Awesome, so that's all we should really need. So now I'm just gonna go into my SDK and run two instances to test the networking. And now that we're in the world, we can see that when someone clicks the coin, it plays the animation for both players. Awesome, so hopefully that's been helpful for you. Feel free to leave a like on the video if you liked it, leave a comment down below if you've got any questions, and feel free to check out some of my other tutorials that I have on the channel. But until next time, bye!